Despite living what I considered a healthy, active lifestyle, I started getting fat. At age 30, I noticed my metabolism slowing down, my weight increasing, and the temptation to get caught in life's bad habits, such as eating out to excess, drinking, and living a sedentary lifestyle intensifying. Instead of yielding to these pressures, I hired a film crew and decided to use myself as a guinea pig in a fitness experiment. Over the months that followed, I learned how to exercise in a safe and effective manner, rediscovered the joys of healthy home-cooked meals, and achieved some noteworthy results. Now, I'm editing the footage I compiled in order to create a new documentary, which I call I Want Abs. If you're someone who wants to get in shape but don't know how to do it, I Want Abs is for you. My movie's on schedule to be released on June 1st, 2016, but you can pre-order it now at iwantabsmovie.com. While I put the final touches on my feature film, I've created this mini-series to give you a sneak peek of how I train to lose weight, shed fat, and build muscle. If you like what you see, perhaps you should consider doing the workouts with me. I'll include the guidelines for the workouts at the end of each video. If you're a newbie like I was, I recommend working out two to three times per week for 50 minutes. And you can absolutely positively mix and match the workouts from these videos in any way you like. Thank you for watching and good luck. It's March 6th. I'm rolling over to my first training session with John Hacker. I'm hoping that he's gonna kick my butt today. And I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to start working out. As you can see, I'm growing out a beard. I have a six o'clock shadow going on. And I have decided that for the entire 12 weeks of this project, I'm gonna be growing my beard to show time. So hopefully by the end of the 12 weeks, I'll have rock hard abs as well as a big beard to prove that I did this and that I'm real. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Are you ready? I am so excited. First exercise we're gonna do is a little exercise called the Roman Twist. You take this ball down, right over there, and I want you to sit on the ball. Bridge out, center of the neck, center of the ball. Like this? Yep, put your hands up straight, hips up, and you're gonna rotate the ball under your shoulders. That's it. Good, we'll do 15 to 20. Fantastic. The closer you put your feet together, the more challenging it's going to be. But don't put them so close that you're falling off the ball. Always stay in control, my friend. Good job. <laughs> 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. You know if you go to 6 o'clock, you've gone way too far. You're probably falling off the ball. That's it. We should just make him do it three more sets, right? No. <laughs> Hips up. Slow it down a little bit more. We're going to go a two second count. Okay. One, two, one, two. Excellent. That's it. Fantastic. Where are you feeling this the most? I'm feeling it in my legs and in my uh, in the side body. Okay. This is working the obliques, working the hamstrings and the glutes. All in one fun fill exercise. Are you taking count? It, no. <laughs> okay, do four more. Four more on each side. One, two, three. And four. Excellent. I want you to sit back up the ball. I want you to rest one minute. We're going to do four sets. It's going to be four set Friday. Cool. All right. Yeah. Now, the thing about really strengthening your core is super duper important. I'm going to give you kind of like functional training, core strengthening one on one. It's a program that I do, you know, because I broke my back 20 years ago. And I have to keep those multifidus, the lower back muscles, really strong because you want those stabilizers to engage the core muscles. And that's what gives you core stability. Most back injuries happen because people are out of shape, they don't have, they don't have any um, core stability, then they go to pick something up and they tear a muscle and then it swells and it causes the pain. So, we're gonna do set number two, but I'm gonna throw a little twist on it. We're gonna have okay. a little medicine ball. So, your minute's up. I want you to bridge out. Hold the ball right here. Mm -hmm. Now this is, you're gonna feel a little bit more in the core as you come over. Okay. So rotate the ball under your shoulders, try not to fall off the ball. That's it. A little slower, stay in control. Good, put your feet a little closer together. Hips up. I know it's a lot. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Rotate the ball. That's good, you got it. You feeling it, man? Oh, I'm feeling yeah. it. Yeah, you have like titanium abs. 
Not half the steel, throw those out the window, man. I want to take him. You'll have them. I want them so bad. You'll have them. Twelve weeks, my friend. Anybody can do that. We are all powerful beyond measure. I'm so glad you believe in me. <laughs> we are, I yeah, totally, man. Are right, you keeping count there? You gotta keep count. Is that ten? It's ten. Do five more on each side. One, a little slower. One, two, two, three, three, four, four. A little slower, slow it down. Five and five. Excellent. I'm gonna take this, set up the ball. You're gonna how long do you rest for? One minute. Excellent. You get three plus. That's set number two, we're gonna do four sets of everything. Hold them here, don't let them touch as you rotate, okay? okay? Real important not to cheat. The body wants to cheat. It's not a moral judgment or anything, it just wants to make the exercise easier. Okay. It makes it easier by dropping your butt down, uh -huh. not staying uh, you know, in that plank position, and, um, and keeping your feet nice and wide. I want you to have your feet close enough together so that you're really feeling the balance, mm -hmm. but not so much that you're falling off the ball. And the ball wants to be like right under my... You want to keep your, the ball, the center of the ball in the center of your neck. Cool. You were back a little too far. Okay. But I'll talk, I'll talk to you. You're doing really good, man. You get like an A+, plus, 10 smiley faces. So bridge out. A little bit more. All right, keep your hips up. Don't let these touch. And stay in control. That's it. Yeah, and 15 on each side, that's two. Two, three, good, keep going, keep counting. Keep your hips up, stay in control. Consistency is the key. Let's jump out and roll over two. You gotta be consistent. That's probably one of the most important variables of any training program. Not intensity, although that's gonna come down the road, but consistency. In your dietary intake, in your training program, in anything, just showing up, man. Feeling it a little bit different, huh? Yeah. Where are you feeling this the most? I'm feeling this <laughs> still in my legs. Okay. <laughs> and in my side body. Okay. Yeah, that's so we're working the obliques, the primary movers of the obliques. We're working the glutes, we're working the hamstrings. What number are you on? I'm on 13. Excellent. I want you to stop at 15. That's it, man. Good job. And then stand up. I'm going to take these. We're going to do one more set. Get a rest for how long? One minute. Yeah, you get an A plus. Now the reason we're mixing it up, we want to alter your fatigue patterns. Fatigue patterns, you have like motor units of like three to five hundred muscle cells make up one motor unit, and that fires. The reason why. Um, I've had literally hundreds of clients over the years come to me and say, I'm not seeing any results. They're doing linear lifting. The motor units fire specific patterns, very linear. When you do the functional curvy hmm. linear exercises, the fatigue patterns are moving around. Huh. And it, by its very nature, it's going to weaken your, or strengthen your weaker areas. We want to attack your weak areas. That's what good program design is all about. So let's alter the fatigue patterns, have a seat in the ball. Last set, no weight. But this time, I want you to have your feet a little closer together. A little closer together. That's right. right. Now try to stay on the ball. Oh, move out a little bit more. Center of the neck, hips up, and rotation. Try not to fall off the ball. And if you fall off the ball, get right back on. <laughs> that's, that's it. See? Yeah, all right. That's good, man. Yeah. Oops. Sometimes we fall off the ball. Okay. So that was half of one. Okay, yeah, that counts as half of one. So 15 and 15, last set. Other on a twist. Good job. That's it. Yeah, we're altering those fatigue patterns now. I have a shirt that I wear that says, have you altered your fatigue patterns today? And so many people will come up to me and they'll say, what's a fatigue pattern and why shall I alter it? And it starts a, pro it starts a conversation. Basically, we want you to be in a pattern that's not in a pattern. We want to freak out your motor units, man. Feeling it? Yep. Good. A little bit slower, proper technique is very important. That's good. It's looking good, man. Stay in the center of the ball. What number are you on? 
11. Okay, that's good. We're thermoregulating now. Move up a little bit more. Right there. Stay in the center of the ball. That's good, man. You're sweating. I like that. Thermoregulation. Very important. That's it. Good job. One more. Excellent. Sit back up on the ball. Successful completion of exercise number one. And just rest. Yeah. <laughs> so primary was probably on the obliques. Yeah. Now I want to work the rectus abdominals. Uh -huh. I'm going to do a fun little exercise called the sit up, get up. Okay. Okay. So we're going to use uh, use a ten pounder. I want all the weights to be light to medium. We don't want to use anything heavy. Okay. Um, people get into the pattern of um, no pain, no gain. I got to get really heavy, especially guys. And if you do that during an initial conditioning phase when you're starting a new exercise program, your risk of injury is going to go way up. So we want to keep it light. Cool. So we're going to stick with this ball. Or better yet, let's do a BOSU. We'll really alter the fatigue patterns. We we'll use a BOSU ball. It stands for both sides up. Not Mr. BOSU. Okay. So I'm going to put that there. So Sergey, what I want you to do is sit on the edge of the BOSU. You're going to lean back. I want the curvature of the BOSU and the curvature of your back. So you want to sit back so your butt's off the floor. Come forward a little bit more, but lay down. Right there, perfect. Now, you're going to hold this 10-pounder straight up. Support your head with your hand. Mm -hmm. Come all the way back. And you're going to do a crunch. Oh, this is as high as I want you to go. Keep the weight straight up. There, feeling that in the core? Yep. Yeah, that's it, man. Keep the weight here. Sit up, get up. We're going to do 15, and then I want you to switch hands. Yeah, good job. Right there, feeling it? That will give you titanium abs, my friend. You pointed his belly again? That was right there, feeling it? <laughs> yeah, good job. And when you switch the weight, bring the weight down here. Don't try to switch it up here because I don't want you to fall. I don't want you to fall on your face. I don't want that either. No, no, it's a little risk mitigation, my friend. You come up a little too high. Okay, weight up. Support your head. Keep your elbows back and eyes on the ceiling. And only come up this high. That's good. Common mistake when people are doing crunches, they come up way too high. They start pulling on their neck. That's it. Feeling it? Yeah. Right there. Excellent. Let's do 15 to 20. Is your range. That's good. The next few days we'll get a body comp on you. I don't want to take a body comp every two to three weeks. It's going to tell us the exact, oof, within a percentage point of what your body fat is. All right? We're going to do four sets of everything. Sit up, get up. Hold the weight straight up. Make sure the most is supporting you in your lower back. Keep your elbows back, and you're going to come up this side. That's good. About 15 to 20 each side. Remember, you're going to switch the hands. I don't know if I can do four sets. All right, your range is 8 to 15. Go to 12. Uh, that's another thing, you will be sore because we're freaking out loading <laughs> units that aren't used to it. The worst of it's going to be the first couple of days. All right? And this first session is a good idea. It's giving me an idea of, you know, where you are. Mm -hmm. A little um, reconnaissance for me. So do at least eight. I think I can do 12. Okay. So you're going to do four sets. You want to pace yourself. And that takes me to Coach Hacker. Rule number eight. Can't do eight, you got too much weight. Real important, real important rule. I see guys all the time at the Y, or at, you know, a lot of other places, um, and they're maxing out, you know, with one or two reps. Risk of injury goes through the roof. That's why I like rule number eight. Super important. And of course, rest a minute. Yeah. Feeling those? Right I'm here? feeling those. Practice yeah. abdominals. I'm feeling more upper, upper, yeah. Okay. Barely in the lower. Okay. We're we'll, we'll, we'll gonna do some lower stuff. I'm not worried about that. Good. And you're thermoregulating your sweating, that's good. Is it good to sweat? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, we're bumping up your metabolic rate. Okay, we're burning off more calories. Because one of the goals that we have is to, is to drop your body comp considerably. Mm -hmm. And we do that in two ways through dietary intake, which we're gonna talk about as we progress through the program, and by increasing muscle mass 
increasing that um, the calories that you burn off. All right, a minute's up. Let's do set number three. Eight to ten and eight to ten. Put your feet together. That's it. Good job. Knees together. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. See, we're altering the fatigue pattern. You can tweak the exercise just a little bit, and it really alters the pattern. Okay. Other side. Oh, try to stretch it down there. There we go. Don't want you to drop it on your head. Oh, I haven't God. lost a client in 22 years. I know I'll lose one now. Never let one drop it on the head. A friend of mine who was doing these, the reason I say that, this was up in Portland about 15 years ago, and he dropped it on his face. So always stay in control. That's super important. And rest one minute. So this last one, we're going to put your feet on the fit disc. Okay. Okay. So this one, we're going to grab this fit disc right here. This is a fit disc. Get a little functional tool. Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right here. Feet are going to be on that. I want you to scoot back about one inch. The lower the ball, the longer the lever, the more the resistance. Okay. And the lower you're going to feel in the abs. All right, so I want you to lean all the way back. Hold this. Now comes the fun part. I want you to lift that leg out straight. Hold it there. <laughs> Eight reps. And do a backflip and do a pull. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Eight to ten. Switch hands and eight to ten on the other side. This will give you titanium abs, my friend. Feeling those lower abs? Oh, yeah. I'm good. I'm sure I want titanium abs. <laughs> Alright, aluminum abs. That's good. We'll start with uh, aluminum abs. Then we'll go to steel and then we'll uh, end up in titanium. Gradual progression. That's it, my friend. Good job. Fantastic sit up, get up. Excellent completion. Exercise number two. Alright, this next one we're going to do, I want to do a, a fly. Uh -huh. So grab the two 12 pounders right there. We're going to use the boat suit and the fit disc. Okay. So I want you to sit on the floor. And again, I'm destabilizing you because the bot we're working the small stabilizer muscles. And I think the stabilizers are as important, if not more important, than the large muscle groups. I'm training this bodybuilder I've been training for about a year and a half mm -hmm. when he first came to me. 20 inch arms. But he couldn't stand on a BOSU ball. He tried to do the Roman twist, fell off the ball every time. Because he had no stabilizer strength. You want those stabilizers to yeah. engage. That's what gives you core stability, hip stability, knee stability, ankle stability, shoulder, everything. So this one, I want you to scoot out a little bit more. Two more inches. Okay, put your feet on the disc. Grab the 12 pounders. You go, oh my god, what's he gonna do? Mm -hmm. So that looks good. Now it comes the fun part, Sergey. Mm -hmm. I want you to bring your hips off the ground and plank up. Bridge up, slight bend in the elbows. We're gonna do a fly. <laughs> slight bend in the elbows. You're gonna do a fly. That's it. That's as far down as you want to go. It's like you're hugging a big tree or a big person. Good. Keep your hips up. How do the weight feel? Light, medium, or heavy? Uh, medium. <laughs> okay, good. This is a great upper body. We're working the pecs, we're working the legs, we're working the core, and we're working your brain too, just to stay on there. Feeling it? 15 to 20. I want you to stop at that point where you can do one more, one more rep. Don't max out on anything that we're doing. Remember, slight bend in the elbows. You're coming down a little too far. I don't want you to hyperextend. You should be feeling this upper body, core, and legs. Yes? Yep. Good. Again, all in one point of exercise. That's it. Good job. Keep your hips up. But don't they want to come down? <laughs> yeah, the body wants to cheat. The body is like, bad body. Don't let the body cheat. It just wants to make it easier. You're bridging up, working the glutes, hamstrings, strengthening multifidus, working the core and the upper body. Okay, that's good. Sit back down, rest one minute, we're going to do the set. Yeah, we destabilized both pivot points. I gave you the hard version first. So, I mean, you just brought up a really good point because while the movie is called I Want Abs, it's not just about abs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have a rock hard six pack and then weak 
dysfunctional everything else. Absolutely. Yeah. So, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> well, actually, the best training program is one that attacks your weaker areas. You want to bring balance to the whole system, and that's what this whole project is all about, bringing balance to the system. Any training program should be like that. Again, I, I, I see guys at a lot of places where I work, and they want huge biceps. That's all they want, or they overbuild their anterior deltoid, and they walk around, they have no shoulder flexibility. Eventually, they're going to get real seriously hurt, and then they hire me, so it's like job security. You want to attack your weak areas. You want to just be really strong and fit and healthy. Mo that's what most people want. So and doing this is going to give me all around, like... Health and wellness. Health and wellness, but also a proportionate ripped... Yeah, as a side effect. As a side effect. You are powerful beyond measure. I think you just got me ready for my second set. Second set, let's do it. You are powerful beyond measure, my friend. We all are. All human beings are. Right into it. That's it. And if you have the right program design and you are consistent with your training program, the results are predictable. 100% guaranteed. A good friend of mine, another trainer, goes, how can you say 100% guaranteed on your class? I go, hey, they have the right program design and they are consistent in, their, in, in the program. Give them their dietary intake and you will achieve your goal. Best trainer on the planet. We don't make people fit. We just provide the structure and the framework. You guys do the work. Hold this line. Yeah. Feeling kind of wobbly and unstabilized? You're going to make me drop one of these on my face. No, that's good. That's good. Keep going. Keep going. Remember, 15 to 20 reps. That's what we want. We'll destabilizing both hip points. And those hips really do want to come down, don't they? Yeah, they want to cheat. The body wants to cheat. Don't let the body cheat. Another great reason for training the stabilizers is uh, by, its, by their very nature, if you do an exercise that requires a lot of balance, it's going to, by its default, strengthen your weaker areas. And that's what you want. You want to attack your weak areas. Not just your strong points, because I guarantee if you just focus on the strong points, you're going to have a neuromuscular imbalance, you're eventually going to get really hurt. And if you have the right training program and you get really strong, your risk of injury is extremely low. I like hearing that. Yeah. Because if I get injured, I can't do any of this, so... Yeah. Well, that, actually, that's another point. If you do get injured, it's important to train, mm -hmm. right? And I'm a certified injury rehab specialist. And I have people that like with the rotator cuff problems. A lot of times people have an injury and say, oh, I can't train. Well, it's a good chance to work on the core, work on the legs, and don't work on the shoulder. Whatever the injury is, you want to have a consistent pattern of training. So, let's do another set. One more set of the BOSU fly. How do you like the BOSU fly? So far, it's the most pleasant one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's it. Okay. Good job. 15 to 20 reps of everything. That's it, Sergey. Fantastic. Good job. Good balance. Keep the hips up. Again, the body will want to cheat. That's it. Good job. Awesome! Completion of the Bosu Fly. Excellent. So why don't you stand up? Now we're going to do two bosus. Uh oh. <laughs> we're going to do a asymmetric <laughs> double bosu, double compound. Sweet. So I'm going to put this bosu here. Mm -hmm. Why don't you grab one 12 pounder? I'll put this other one back. And now, what I want you to do, Sergey, stand on that bosu facing me. Take your left leg, mm -hmm. put it on this pose. I'm going to spot you. See this little spot on the wall? Why don't you just keep find a spot on the wall? Look at this little paint chip. Uh -huh. right here. That's going to help you with your balance. You're going to do a half lunge with a curl, a hammer curl. Uh -huh. So basically, keep your elbow tucked in. You're going to be doing a lunge with a curl. Good. That's good. Don't let that knee pass the toe. Good. Excellent. 15. And then you're going to switch arms and switch legs. 
Good. Up and down like a piston. Don't let that front knee pass the tail. Is it passing it right now? Oh, it's coming close. That's good. Up and down like a piston. Straight up and down. Good. That's it. How does the weight feel? Light, medium, or heavy? It's pretty medium. Okay, good. Let's do 15 and then switch arms and legs. This is asymmetric because we're just using one. This is a compound exercise. We're doing a lunge with a curl. So again, we're working the stabilizers, hitting everything, working the balance. Okay, that's 15. All right, now switch legs and switch arms. Stay focused, keep your eye on that little paint chip, or you can look this direction. Just find a point on the wall. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, either way, there we go. <laughs> that works too. Either way. I'm glad you're here, otherwise yeah. I'd be confused. Nope, and you need to put the other foot forward because you had that last foot forward. That's why I like, always have the weight with the rear foot, that reminds you. Okay? okay? Keep your eye on the wall, and a lunge, hammer curl. Mid easier on the shoulder. That's good. Up and down like a piston, I don't want that in the front knee to come past the toe. How do you like these freaky exercises? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. One side is gonna be harder than the other, you know? Because one side is gonna be your dominant side. But this is good, this is going to bring balance to the system, okay? That's it. Lunge with a curl. You got it. You got it. Do 15. And you are thermoregulating. Yes? Yes. Good. That's it. Only eight more. Yeah, you can do it. Set. Yeah, you can do it. And then we're going to rest a long, nice long minute. A minute can be a long time. So I don't want to curl like this, I want to just straight up. You can hammer curl now. You can do a regular curl. Hammer, this is a little bit safer on the shoulder. A bit different. And then we alter the pattern, alter the two patterns. That's it. Good job, man. Two more. Also, the balance work, uh, it's going to help with your balance and reaction time which is so important. A lot of the top athletes, athletic teams, professional teams, collegiate teams, they do a lot of functional balance work um, because if you can react quicker and have core strength uh, and strengthen those stabilizers, uh, you're going to be better in any sport that you do. Sweet. So they call it what they call uh, sports general. And, and if you're driving down the street, you want to be able to react as quickly as possible. You know, because if it can react a hundredth of a second quicker, you're less likely to be in a, a car accident or any type of other accident. So that's why you want to be able to react and be strong and be powerful, be unmeasured. Feeling it? Yeah, I'm feeling it. All right. Okay, second set. All right, set. second set. We're just going to do three sets of these. So 15 and 15. This time, left foot forward. And again, you're going to do a lunge with a curl on the BOSU, straight up and down. Try not to let the front knee pass the front toes. That's it. 15 and 15. Good job. Results are predictable. You are consistent. Whatever you do. You know, my wife Becky and I, we just got back from Miami, and I told you we did that, mm -hmm. that uh, half marathon. And uh, her training program was great. So she knew exactly what she was doing. She, she wanted to pass like, you know, a couple hundred people the last couple of miles, and she did. A lot of people say, you know, you're going to hit the wall in a marathon or whatever athletic event you're going to do. If you have the right training program, the results are predictable. And you're going to have so much fun. <laughs> Point, keep that eye on the wall right there. That's it. This side is so weak. Again, it's your non-dominant side. You're right-handed? Are we talking about this? Right-handed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you gotta try not to bend your body so much. If you're gonna fall off the ball, just stay in the, yeah, just step off. Okay. Stay in a neutral position, nice and straight. Cervical, thoracic, and lumbar, nice and straight. I know that's easy for me to say. You're the one that's just freaking out. <laughs> but that's good. We want to freak out the motor units. That's it. Good job. What number are you on? Seven. All right. You get a fifteen. Thank you, 
it. And you should be feeling that the primary mover is the rear leg. It, yeah. Yeah, you should be feeling the rear leg in lunges. A lot of people think it's the front leg, it's not. If you lunge forward and the knee comes past the toe, then you're putting too much stress on the knee. You want the rear leg to be the primary, primary mover. You got it. Excellent! Let me get a heart rate on you real quick. Okay. Get your pulse rate, I'm gonna tell you when to start. Find it, I'm gonna cry artery, don't press too hard. You got a beat, the pulse? Yep. Start counting now. Stop. 12. 120. Okay, I'm gonna take your pulse rate again in about 40 seconds, okay. and that's gonna give me a recovery rate. 120 is pretty good. We want to get it up a little bit higher, but we waited a little bit. Well, I think the most important biomarker is, is, is the recovery rate, how fast your heart rate drops. But it's an indicator of just cardiac wellness. So just rest, we're going to take in about another 15 minutes. Or 15 minutes. 15 seconds. <laughs> how you feeling? Good. Good. When I do lunges, I've noticed that uh, my legs will cramp the next day like, pretty severely. Okay. Nah. Uh, a lot of times when you cramp up, you're not hydrated. Mm. Um, also, we're doing new exercises. We're freaking out the motor units. Uh, do you have a stretching routine? Nope. You're going to have a stretching routine. Okay. That's real important. You want to stretch every day. All right, let's take your pulse rate and we're going to see where it is. Don't press too hard. Tell me when you got a beat. You got a beat? No. Try right, right here. Got it? No. <laughs> I'm dead. No, you're, you're alive. You're there. Okay, I got it. Start counting now. Stop. Eight. All right, so you went from 120 to 80. So your, your pulse rate really dropped. You have a good heart, Sergey. All right, let's do one more set. Okay. You do have a good heart, Sergey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good recovery rate. So last one, 15 and 15. Yeah, cramping up could be a lot of things. Um, when you're starting a new fitness program, uh, if your body's not used to it, you're gonna have more likelihood of cramping up. If you're not hydrated, if you don't stretch out, I'm gonna give you a stretching routine. Look at that, yeah. Especially when the trainer does this. <laughs> oh, that's good. Get back on the ball. Literally. Yep. Ball off the ball, you get right back on. 15 and 15. Good job. That's it. You're looking good. Keep your eye on that point. It's getting kind of difficult to decide it. Again, you're going to have one side that's um, non dominant. You said you're right-handed, primary mover is your left leg, and that's why. But that's good, man. We're freaking out your motor units. So, let's have a seat on the mat, facing up, middle. Um, yeah, that's good. I actually bring your legs off the side. So, have you ever done a V-up? No. A V-up is basically a seat. It's this position right here. Uh -huh. So you're going to be in a V-up position. I'm going to throw you this ball. You're going to touch it and toss it back to me. Okay. If your hip flexors cramp up, again, I want you to stop. So let's get this. I almost part of the big will actually. <laughs> All right. Let's do it. Okay. All right. You ready? Grab the ball. Touch it to the floor. Throw it back. We're going to do five, two, three, four, five. Excellent. Now spin around. Legs facing that way. Five on the inside. Touch the ball. One, two, three, four, five. Excellent. And rest. Good job. That's just a lateral toss of the V up. It's an old boxing exercise. Boxers have a good medicine ball. You want to have a nice, strong abs if you're being punched. You know, I mean, I don't really like the sport because the goal is to cause brain damage, but. You want to have a nice strong course. They have a lot. This is an old boxing exercise. Where'd you feel that the most? Right here. Okay. Yeah, working the intercostals. Yes. Yeah. Come on off to the side. Uh, this also works the lower back, so you gotta be careful. Okay. How's your lower back feel? Feels great. 
All right. We got another 20 seconds. We're going to do seven and two. This time we're going to do eight and eight. Okay. Yeah. We're causing cellular damage now, Sergey. <sighs> Good cellular damage. What's the difference? Uh, basically what we're doing is um, by having a good consistent program, we're tearing your body down and then at night with a good dietary intake, it's re going to rebuild and get a little bit stronger. That's how you build muscle mass over a consistent period. It's called the law of progression. Cool. And if you have the right program design, results are predictable. I know I sound like a broken record, but all this stuff is real important. I need a Two, three, let's do ten, four, five, six, Seven, eight, two more, nine, and ten. Switch around, and ten on this side. One, two. Now I feel it in the low back. Three. Oh, okay. Four, five. You okay? Maybe eight. Six. Okay, let's do two more. Seven, and last one. Excellent. Play back. Bring your knees up to your chest and stretch out your back. Okay, we're just going to do the two sets. That's an excellent example of John Akerlana. I want to start feeling it. Yeah. It might be a little too much. Always listen to your body. Stop and then reassess. Okay. Feel all right? Yeah, I feel great. Okay. You got started getting tight really quick, but... Yeah. V-ups, again, you're really working the multifidus now, lower back. That's an area that I really work on because I broke my back. Mm -hmm. Right? Next exercise we're going to do. We're going to stay on the mat. So lay down on the mat, face up again. And... So, Sergey, uh -huh. put your legs up, nice and straight. Just lay back and relax. Pretty relaxing, huh? Yeah. Yeah, you look, feel really comfortable. How come I feel like I'm not going to be? Because you're not. Put your, put your palms down. Uh -huh. Now bring your hips up and lift this leg up 15 times while staying in the ball. Two, three, control, a little slower, four, five, six, Seven, eight, go to ten. Nine, last one. Now other leg, ten more. Just as a leg lift on the Swiss ball. Feel the hamstring? Oh yeah. Feel the glutes? Yep. Lower back all right? Mm -hmm. Good. That's it. That's ten. Excellent. Sit back down, rest a minute. We're going to alternate this with alternate arm, alternate leg. Okay. Which is going to work the opposing muscle groups. This one worked back here and here. Now we're going to work quads, vastus medialis, abs. Cool. On the alternate arm, alternate leg. So what I want you to do this time is bring your legs up, hold the ball here, bring your legs out a little bit, bring your hands up, and now comes the fun part. You're going to keep this hand on the ball, this leg on the ball, bring this arm back, and this leg down. That's it. Oh yeah! Other leg, other arm. You're going to alternate. So now, other leg, other arm. That's it. Keep your core tucked in. Tuck your belly button through the floor. A little slower. <laughs> That's it. Yeah! 10 to 15. You got it, my friend. How's that core doing? <laughs> Feel it? Feel it? Keep going. Do a couple more. Do a couple more. Yeah, we're freaking out the motor units now. Did I mention I hate ab exercises? <laughs> oh, you're gonna love them soon. And rest. That's good. So rest yeah, a minute. We're gonna go back to the leg lift, and then we'll do one more set of the alternate arm. Or better yet, we'll do the same leg, same arm. On this one, where'd you feel it the most? Actually, in my abs, in my lower abs. Yeah, that's what we want to hit below the belly button, right yeah. here. That's a really hard area to hit. This exercise is an exercise that would get that. I mean, it's amazing, but it's, you're not really doing all that much, but it's... You're doing a lot. I can tell, I see people at the other places where I work that uh, just do crunches all the time, yeah. which is the worst thing you can do. Uh, they'll be really strong up here, and then they'll just, boop, they'll be really weak uh -huh. below the abs. Again, you want to have balance to the system. You want to attack everything, especially cool. the weak areas. So, let's go back. This time we're going to do um, leg lift again. Mm -hmm. So hips up, and you're going to lift the leg 10 to 15 times each leg. That's it. Feeling a little out of balance? Uh huh. Good. That makes the trainer happy, Sergey. That's 
set. Good job. Yeah, good routine. Lower back, all right? Yep. Good. Right into it. No rest. Good technique. Want to hold that line nice and straight. Good job. And of course you want to stop at that point and do a couple more. Don't max out. Did I tell you the endorphin story? No. Ah, I told Valia this. This is great. I've got a client. I've been training for like six years. Okay, stop. Oh. Valia's not here. Okay. <laughs> tell me. Okay. Um, did I tell you the endorphin story? Did I tell you the endorphin story? You did not. Ah, great story. I have a client. I've been training for about six years. She first came to me and her doctor recommended an exercise program because she was having depression and and exercise releases endorphins, the natural opiates that make you feel good. So she did a routine and then she came back the next time and she goes, I felt so good, my depression was gone. I had those, those dolphins in my brain. She could remember endorphins. And I just, I love the visual of like dolphins like swimming around in the brain, you know, jumping over the corpus callosum. So now whenever I train her, the first thing we do is like a ritual. Whenever I see her, I go, got the dolphins? She goes, yeah, I got those dolphins, they're great. Were you just like, what are you talking about dolphins in your brain? <laughs> she just couldn't remember endorphins. And the endorphins just are, are feel good. It, it enhances the human condition. That's why this is the best investment that anybody can make. So, same leg, same arm. Keep the core tucked in, 10 to 15 each side. That's it. Fantastic. Getting those endorphins. Love the endorphins. Oh, What's that? I'm quivering. <laughs> okay, good. Actually, that's that's perfectly normal. A lot of people freak out because their body starts shaking. And rest. Now bring your knees up to your chest and stretch out your back. Okay? So there's one thing about stretching. I see people stretching wrong all the time. Mm -hmm. You want to hold the stretch. It's a static stretch. And you see people bouncing mm -hmm. like that. Never, ever bounce. That's called ballistic stretching. Your risk of injury will go up. Also, you want to stretch when you're warmed up. Never stretch when you're cold, first thing. So stretch kind of at the end? Not at, at the end. end. Yeah. Then just stretch out the back. Put your feet flat on the floor. Keep your shoulders here. Bring the knees off to the side. And just hold the stretch. Breathe nice and deep. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Because you are done! We're gonna do about five minutes of stretching. Sweet. You said you didn't have a stretching routine? No. You're gonna have one after the day. Okay. Very important to stretch. Legs off to the side. You know, it's crazy. I do actually have this sensation of and more energy. Like yeah. in the middle of the workout, when I was on those BOSU balls, mm -hmm. I was definitely fatigued. Mm -hmm. But now I feel like I have some yeah. Oomph. Yeah, it's invigorating. And actually, that's a really good sign. I want you to leave your workout feeling like you can do it. Like, like you worked out, but not completely exhausted. Most Americans like quit within three weeks of the starting an exercise program. And they do that because they're way too intense in the initial conditioning phase. They mm. push themselves way too hard and they're totally exhausted. They, and, and, and you're going to quit. It's going to destroy your motivation. You start dreading your workout. You want to feel like, yeah, I can do a little bit more, but I feel really good. You know, and you want to key into those natural uh, opiates, the endorphins. Cool. So why don't you stand up. Next stretch we're going to do is that hip flexor stretch. Put this foot out here. And you're just going to basically come forward and just stretch out right in here. If the hip flexors get too tight, the hips can rotate under and your lower back muscles will get tight and you're more prone to this muscle strain or a tear. Which is a violation. John Hacker, law number one, don't mess yourself up. <laughs> Feel the stretch? Good, yeah. Should feel really good. You want to hold it for anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds, and then we'll stretch the other side. Next stretch we're going to do is a ballet stretch or a side stretch. So cross this leg over, and then bring this arm up over the top, and then just you're stretching the entire side. Also gives a good shoulder stretch, too. Feeling so, it? Yeah. Yeah. So, how does one pick through? Like some people swear that ballistic stretches are the way to go, and then you they're say wrong. That they're not. Okay. 
<laughs> um, generally speaking, I shouldn't say that, 95% of the people should do static stretching. Uh, most people should listen to, um, if you can't do H, you have too much weight. Mm -hmm. you know, maxing out is okay if you're a power lifter and you're training specifically for a sport. Um, so generally speaking, you want to keep it as safe as possible. So we're following really safe guidelines. Because it's no good if you get hurt. Does that answer your question? Yep. More or less? Good. I like the first answer. Okay. Because they're wrong. <laughs> Generally speaking, yeah. Yeah, they're wrong. You are done, my friend. Ah, Thank you so much. Yeah. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, how you feeling? That was a good uh, about hour workout. I feel great. Yeah. Is this what I did? Uh, more or less. These are my notes. Um, Let's see, we did uh, Roman twist, one-legged bridge, uh, or the leg lift, the sit-up, get-up. We didn't do the graviton today. We're going to do that next time. Mm -hmm. uh, alternate arm, alternate leg, leg lift, uh, BOSU lunge. Uh, we did a double compound, not a triple compound. And hip stretch, back stretch, side stretch, and shoulder stretch. Sweet. Yeah, and every time that we work out, we're going to tweak it a little bit. Fantastic. Because you want to be in a pattern and not being in a pattern. No two workouts should ever be the same. So we're building these like library of exercises in your brain so that whenever you do a workout, it's gonna be different. Cause you're gonna be living like another, what, 100 years? Hopefully more, 120. Yeah, 120, yeah. yeah. I'll be so, the first person to live to 100 and, what is that, 50? Yeah, yeah. well it's like, and it, that's, that, that's interesting you bring up that point because I've trained a lot of really young, older people and a lot of really old, younger people. Huh? You know, 30 year olds that were biologically, um, you know, probably in their 50s or 60s. Mm -hmm. And I have a couple of, I have this one woman, she's 65 years old, I was training her, and I didn't set this up, I swear to God. I was training her in another gym, and uh, she's, a, she's a, um, a fitness competition up at Seven Feathers, mm -hmm. and she's just looking great, and these two teenage girls came up during the workout, and they just said, we just wanted to say that, we just pray that we look like you in 20 years. <laughs> wow. And they're teenage girls, 20 wow. years, and she's 64. So it's like, it's the best investment anybody can make. So what do you think? Would you like to try it? If so, this is the exact workout that I discussed in this episode. I encourage everybody to do at least eight repetitions of each exercise, and don't forget to rest one minute in between sets. If you'd like to learn more about my upcoming movie, please visit iwantabsmovie.com. You can also check out what my coach John is doing at coachhacker.com. That's coachhacker with one H dot com.